From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Good morning, dear friend. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Pastor Alan Bagg, and we're getting together once again to study God's Word. This week we're having a look that healing is in fact yours today. You have been healed. Remember 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, Jesus Himself bore our sins in His own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Now, we began having a look at this yesterday, and remember I showed us that from Isaiah 53, that's what Peter was quoting here. Well, let's go have a look at that, Isaiah 53, and we get down here to verse 4, that Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, we know from Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, that those, the words here yeah, for griefs and sorrows are sicknesses and pains. That Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. Verse 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes we are healed. So Peter's quoting here from Isaiah. We understand that when Jesus died on the cross, that He paid the price for your sin to free you from all sin, that you might live for righteousness. When you believe that, and you confess Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, you are immediately born again. Well, the same time that He bore your sin, He bore every sickness. And so the same way, by whose stripes you were healed. Well, when I was born as a child in this earth, I may have been born into the earth in a place of sin, but you know that as a baby we've never committed any sins until we grew up. And then, when, as we grew up, we did sin, and the result of that sin was spiritual death. Now, when we died spiritually, does that mean that Jesus, what He did on the cross, was suddenly negated? No, He died for that reason. Knowing that we would sin, He already freed us from sin. 2,000 years ago, He paid the price. That, that freedom from sin is already in place. All that has to happen now that I'm dead in sin is hear the truth. And when I hear the truth that Jesus loves me and that He paid the price for me to be saved, and I know that He did it 2,000 years ago, He freed me from sin, I can right now say, well, praise God, I believe that. And I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And the moment I do that, that price which He paid 2,000 years ago comes into effect right now, and I'm free from sin in an instant, completely free from sin. Well, the same time that He died for our sin, He died for our sicknesses and diseases. He paid the price. And the Bible says He bore that sickness and He carried the pain. Well, of course, now, in today, people may have been... I've, I've had it. I've, you know, you wake up one morning and you feel that you feel a little heavy and uh, the nose may be burning at the back of the throat. You feel an itch and maybe you got a bit of a headache. There's a bit of heat in your body. You realize... Uh oh, there's something coming down here. Now I've got two options. Either one is I say, oh no man, I'm sick again. Remember Jesus said in Mark chapter 11 verse 23, that whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says will come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says that an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So if I say, oh man, I'm sick again, I just brought that thing out of me and created it. And then the result is that sickness kicks in and, and I get heavily oppressed underneath that sickness. And as a result, that sickness is then able to affect me the same way sin affected me before I knew the truth of living righteously. So 1 Peter 2.24 says, that I've been healed by Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible also tells us in John that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. That's 1 John 1, 9. When I confess my sin, He forgives me. Now, how can He do that? Because 2,000 years ago, He forgave me. 
so that forgiveness is already in place, but the moment I confess it, it becomes relative to my life at that moment. Now I'm forgiven in reality, in, in manifestation. So in reality, I was already forgiven, but now that I confess it, that forgiveness manifests. Now the same way with sickness and disease. Jesus bore that sickness 2,000 years ago. Uh, he died and paid the price for it. It's destroyed. But now we are, if I can use it this way, tempted to be sick. How? The symptoms begin to influence us. Now if I say, you know what, man, I'm really sick, I create that thing. It, it becomes a part of my life. Instead, what I should do is say, you know what? Even though sin may tempt me, I have a right to resist that sin. Remember James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, sin would be a temptation. So I say, no, I resist that temptation to sin. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. Why? He bore my sin. He carried that sin. He destroyed that sin. He became sin for me. I'm redeemed from it. And I choose to live a life that is holy and upright. See, now I'm choosing life. That's why I say to you at the end of every program, choose life. This is how you do it. And I say, I choose life. I refuse to sin. And by resisting the devil, he flees. Well, I do the same thing with sickness and disease. When that symptom shows up in my body, I can say, no, I refuse to walk in that thing. Uh, Jesus bore that on the cross 2,000 years ago, and I'm accepting that as truth. He bore my sicknesses. He carried my diseases. Look, it's written. And by His stripes, you were healed. So if I was healed, then I am healed right now. And so I accept that as a truth. And I say, you know what? I've been healed. And by doing that, I'm placing pressure against the symptoms. I'm resisting it using the Word of God. And as I do that, that sickness has to flee and my healing manifests. Now, what I want to do is over the next two days or so is have a look at the various methods that one can stand in faith for your healing. There's many different ways. There's different ways it manifests. And what I've done in studying is found out that there are seven different ways that the Lord has given us that we can produce that healing within our bodies. Now, we personally don't produce it. It's God who does it. But in order for it to manifest, I need to be able to stand in faith for it to take place. And so we're going to do that. We're going to have a look at how you can produce this healing in your body because Jesus paid the price for you. He, he totally annihilated sickness and disease. And there's no reason whatsoever that you should be carrying it. And so I want to help you get to a place where you can walk free from that sickness and disease if you are healed, I also want to speak to you in a way that uh, you can stay in a place of healing. You don't have to worry about getting sick again. So when that sickness comes along and tries to tempt you, you're in a strong place where you're able to resist it. Now, first of all, let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And Jesus teaches us here in verse 12. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Now, what works did Jesus do? Well, of course, he healed the sick. That was one of the things he did. He opened blind eyes. Uh, deaf ears could hear again. The mute could speak. He, he healed so many different types of diseases. And he says, yeah, the works that Jesus did, he's seen, this is Jesus speaking, the works that I do, he will do also. Who? The one who believes in Jesus. And listen, Greater works than these He will do, because I go to my Father. That's interesting, isn't it? Jesus says, not only will we heal the sick and raise the dead, we will be doing greater works than this. Now, that greater means we're going to be doing more than Jesus even did on the earth. Isn't that amazing? How is that possible? Well, it would be us corporately as the body of Christ. Jesus could only be at one place in one time in His physical body on the earth, but... Uh, when He rose from the dead, He gave us the right to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And when we do that, the power of the Holy Spirit entered into us. And the body of Christ is now filling the earth. We're all over the place. And it's that spreading across the planet. He says, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, 
This word here is very interesting. When you actually study this out, whatever you ask in my name, this is, <laughs> it's an amazing truth when you, when, you, when you first are encountered by it. Uh, what happens is when you first hear the way it's taught, it's kind of, a, it, it, can, can that be, is that true? But when you study it out and you realize what the reality behind it is, then it makes entirely good sense. Notice he says, whatever you ask in my name. That word ask, interestingly, in the original Greek is demand. Now, just hold on. Don't run away yet. I want to show you this. Whatever you demand in my name, that I will do. Now, the, the first place people have a problem sometimes in the, that particular understanding is they say, oh, how, how can you demand anything from God? I mean, we're not here to tell God what to do. And my answer to that is, yes, amen. We do not tell God what to do. We're not, gonna, we're not in charge of God. He is our God. He is sovereign. He rules over us. But, now listen to this. When He died on the cross, when Jesus paid the price, the Father determined that by Jesus' death, we were healed. So in God's mind, you're already healed. What happens then is the enemy, Satan, he comes in and tries to put symptoms of sickness and disease back on you, hoping that you would say something like, I'm sick. And the moment you say that, he is then able to have full and free permission to move in and bring that to pass. But he is the one that is bringing that attack against us. So when you place a demand, you're not demanding from God you are placing a demand against Satan. In other words, God paid the price. Jesus died for your sickness. The Word of God backs it up. The Holy Spirit's anointing is there to remove burdens and destroy yokes. And the angels surround you to keep you safe. Now the devil's trying to come against that. You place a demand on the power and the anointing that is behind the Word of God. As Jesus did when He was on that, in, in that garden, when, when he was in the wilderness, when he was tempted by Satan, he said, every time Satan came along, he said, it is written. He placed a demand on the Word of God against Satan. And when you demand the Word of God to be active against Satan, it comes to pass. That's what he's saying. Whatever you demand in my name, he says, I'll do it. Why? Because it's already done. Jesus said, I paid the price for this thing. I've done it. I've died for you. I paid the price to free you from sin. I paid the price to free you from sickness and disease. I paid the price to free you from poverty. I freed you from the curse. All you need to do is call on that and I'll make sure it's carried out. In other words, Jesus is there to back us up. He's saying, I paid the price. I gave you my word. I'll back the word up. Just call on it and I'll be there. And he says, whatever you demand. He says, I'll do it. Why? That the Father may be glorified. In other words, the Father determined it to be. And when Jesus ensures it's carried out, God gets all the glory. So when sickness and disease comes, you demand your healing against Satan and say, Father, I thank you. Based on your word, that healing comes to pass. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Now let me show you that. I mean, come with me to Acts chapter 3. He has a very good example of this taking place. And I want you to see just how it works. Verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, and whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms from those who entered the temple. Now who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And so he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Hallelujah. Now get this truth here. He was instantly 
healed. Yes? Now, remember this man lay at this gate, the Bible says, for, for many years. He, he, let's go back there, have a look here. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. Now, obviously, he had been laid at that gate, and it's the same temple that Jesus went into. So evidently, Jesus at that, for whatever reason, has not yet spoken to the man about his healing. But this day, Peter sees him, and I want you to get the wording of Peter. Look at verse 6. He says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. What I do have I give you. Now what does Peter have? First of all, he has the word of God. Secondly, he has the anointing of God in him. Third, he has the faith of God because of the word. Fourth, he has the anointing to release that, that removes burdens and destroys yokes. And fifth, he has the full authority of Jesus. Notice, he says, what I have, I give you. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, what I want you to see here, he doesn't ask God. <laughs> yeah, look at that. He doesn't say, Father, I'm asking you, please heal this man. Please, if it's your will. Father, I'm begging you, please. He, he, to notice, none of that is there. He walks up to that man. The man says, please, can you give me some money? Peter says, look at me. He says, now I want you to know something. You don't need money. You need healing. I've got it. Now, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he pulls that man out of that ground and he stands right up at that moment. Now, listen, what happened? At that moment, he used the authority of the name of Jesus against what Satan had done in his body. Now that's point number one. Use the authority of Jesus against the works of Satan. You have that full authority. Look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Now keep your mark here at Acts. We're going to come back to it. But come with me right now. Mark chapter 16 and have a look here at verse 15. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel, gospel is the good news, to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Now listen, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. Now, how do you believe in the name of Jesus? Sure you do. He says, These signs will follow those that believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, by no means hurt them. These signs will follow those that believe. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Now, that's what we're talking about here. This authority will accompany those that believe and you have the full right to apply that. Remember James one verse seven, uh, James four verse seven, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That's what we're talking about here. The demand in the name of Jesus. Now, why is that so, such a powerful truth? Well, Colossians chapter two verse fifteen says that Jesus disarmed, according to the New American Standard Bible, Jesus disarmed the rulers. And authorities. The Greek for disarm there means to strip. He made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him, through Jesus. Now, the Phillips translation says he exposed them, shattered, empty, and defeated in his final glorious triumphant act. Hallelujah. Another translation says he rid himself of all the powers of evil. Weymouth says, and the hostile princes and rulers he stripped off from himself. In other words, Jesus took Satan. And in his death, totally stripped Satan of all authority, of all that power. He totally stripped him naked, spiritually, of every power that he would have against you as a believer. And that name is the name above every name. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 is clear about that. That Jesus has been given the name above every name. And so this man, let's go back to Acts chapter 3, was healed because Peter called on the name of Jesus. Now notice, he didn't have to say, God, please heal him. If it's your will, 
Let's see if this will take place. No, he totally believed in his power that he had within him, the, the power of Jesus, the power of God that he had within him. He totally believed in it in the name of Jesus. So when he reached out to that man, he said, I command you to walk. So he placed a demand on what he had learned from Jesus. And you can see this in verse 16. He says, because what happened here was they then started thinking that there was something powerful about Peter and, and how could this have happened, etc. And then he says here in verse 16, and his name, the name of Jesus, through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Notice Peter says here, yeah, it's the faith in the name that brought it to pass. That name is the name above every name. The word of God is clear that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess. That's why people, that's why, well not people, I say the enemy more, it's his fault. The enemy is so petrified of the name, so much so that he will use that name as a swear word in people's mouths, try to negate the authority of that name, try to make it just another name, just try, try to loosen it up completely. Don't ever use the name of Jesus as a, as a form of blasphemy. Don't use it as a swear word. There's power in that name. And when something comes against you, sickness, disease, lies, deception, uh, sin, poverty, anything, you lift up the name, say, in the name of Jesus, I command you be healed. In the name of Jesus, we are free from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, we resist this temptation to sin. In the name of Jesus, when you call on that name, the Bible says you'll be saved. Not just saved to go to heaven. Saved from sickness and disease. Saved from destruction. Saved from poverty. Saved from sickness. Saved from everything that the curse would try to bring against you. That's right. Saved from sickness and disease. So today, right now, begin to exercise that name. Develop your faith in the concept and the knowledge that the name is above every name. Nothing can stand in its presence. And as you say, no, I resist that in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. It is done. You will see healing starts to take place in your life. I'm going to discuss some other things with you, but that's at another time. I've got something else to share with you. I'll see you right after. Let's join Alan Bagg for more Wisdom for Life. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. This is Alan Bagg and in fact, welcome to our new studio. With the help of your prayer and support, Alan Bagg will be teaching the uncompromised and powerful Word of God from our brand new Wisdom for Life program. I really want to thank all of you so much. You know, we've been trusting God to do this and... Thank you for your partnership, family. Together, you are helping us reach further and be more effective through our brand new Wisdom for Life program. I'm really looking forward to spending some great time with you in the studio around the Word of God because that's what we have for, is you and me together studying the Word of God and receiving the wisdom that we need to be able to live this life just as God designed for us to live it. Healing is for today. Jesus paid the price for your healing. This series consists of 12 messages and reveals what Jesus did for you. It reveals how you can receive your healing. It even reveals how you can prevent sickness from entering your life. You already have the anointing of God in you. It just takes the faith in God's Word to bring it to pass. This Healing Power Collection will build your faith and grow your understanding of healing and being in health. Discover the powerful principles you can apply to receive your healing. Learn powerful truths that will increase your life. Over 12 hours, 12 hours of faith, inspiration, 12 hours of anointing flooding into your body through the spoken word of God. This series will help Give equip you to withstand all the enemy's attacks on your so health. Get the tape so you can hear them, build and strengthen your faith, and step over into the healing that God has for you. Walk in divine health. Contact us at these details and order your series today. It is time for you to experience the full and total benefits of what Jesus died for. He paid the price for our sin, and He paid the price for our sickness and disease. He paid the price for our prosperity, for our health, every arena of life. He paid the full price for it. 
Now, of course, we know that the enemy tries to steal that from us. Well, that's what I put this series together. This is a result of years and years of teaching. I've taught maybe once and maybe two-part series and a three-part series. And what we've done is we've put them all together in one pack. This is a healing power pack. If anyone's suffering from sickness or disease, you get a hold of this, plug it into your tape player, and you listen to them over and over and over and over again. Twelve hours of word, twelve hours of faith, inspiration, twelve hours of anointing flooding into your body through the spoken word of God. And then as it renews your way of thinking and it builds up faith in your heart as you speak that word out, it brings that healing to pass inside of you. So get a hold of this. I really encourage you. Make sure this is part of your library so that anytime you're challenged with sickness or disease, either in you or your family, you can put this on for them. They can listen to it and charge their faith and become part of God's promise of healing. It's yours. Get it today and enjoy it. I want to pray for you right now. I know that many people have been struggling with sickness and disease, but I know today God has, pray, has already paid the price for you. And as I pray for you, I'm going to stand in agreement that it comes to pass. So if you're trusting God for healing, just stretch your hands out right now towards me, and I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for my dear friend. And Lord, I know that you paid the price for complete healing. And I believe in the name of Jesus that, that healing is released into their body. And right now, Father, a healing comes to pass. Your anointing removes those burdens, destroys those yokes. Pain leaves now in the name of Jesus. That pain leaves that body. And Father, I speak your complete healing into that person now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Praise God. Well, I believe it's done. I'd like you to write to me and let me know what has happened. I've had so many testimonies of how God has healed people on this program. And I believe that it's happened for you too. I love you dearly. And until tomorrow when we get together to study the Word of God, this is Pastor Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Wisdom for Life has made this week's programs available on CD and DVD. For you to purchase the series, just call our number or write to us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Quote this code and you will have your series on the way to you without any delay.